Everybody loves gold, right? It's shiny, it's pretty, and it's worth its weight in, well, gold. So you'd think New South Wales Governor George Gipps would have been thrilled when in 1844, Reverend William Clark showed him some gold he'd found. But put it away, Mr. Clark, or we shall all have our throats cut. The government had responded with similar hostility to the gold finds of James McBrien in 1823. La 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 la. And Polish scientist explorers John Lotsky in 1834 and Paul Strzelecki in 1839. Wombats, destroy! The government feared gold fever would trigger a convict uprising. But it changed its tune after 6,000 Australians left to join the Californian gold rush in 1849. Gold was the new black, and the government announced a reward for the discovery of commercial quantities of it. Edward Hargraves had farmed sheep near Bathurst, harvested sea cucumbers in the Torres Strait, and worked as a sailor, publican, shopkeeper, and steamship agent, all by the age of 33. It was time for a career change, and gold prospecting sounded fun. Hargraves, who'd rushed to California to stake his claim on the gold fields, rushed back to New South Wales to claim his stake of the reward. Everybody laughed when Hargraves announced he'd strike it rich near Bathurst, as it was just like California. But Hargraves would have the last laugh. He enlisted local boy John Lister, who'd already found gold in the area, but naively neglected to tell anyone about it. On 12 February 1851, Hargraves followed Lister down Lewis Ponds Creek and his luck panned out. This is a memorable day in the history of New South Wales. I shall be a baronet, you will be knighted, and my old horse will be stuffed, put in a glass case, and sent to the British Museum. Hargrave's tiny specks were a flash in the pan, but Lister and his friends, the Tom brothers, made larger finds. Hargraves told them he had to leave on urgent business, and oh, could he have all the gold they'd found? Hargraves' urgent business was rushing to Sydney to dud them out of the reward. As the reward size was dependent on gold produced, Hargraves told every man and his dog about the find, even though Lister begged him not to. Fortune seekers flocked to a tent town Hargraves named Ofa, after King Solomon's legendary city of riches. There, they hit pay dirt, and so Australia's first gold rush was born. Gold! Gold to Australia! Gold! A line of would-be gold diggers stretched the 250 kilometres from Sydney to Ofa. Towns emptied. Teachers deserted their students. Sailors left their ships stranded. Charlotte Godley complained the loss of her runaway butler had forced her to open her own front door. Some struck it rich during the gold rush that swept through New South Wales and Victoria from 1851 to the late 1860s. One miner put a five pound note between two pieces of bread and ate it. Others showed their appreciation for visiting international artists by showering them with flowers and nuggets. Ouch, that really hurt. But many diggers threw away their jobs and families for a pipe dream. Those who returned from the gold fields empty-handed were described as mortified, half-starved and crestfallen fellows, gaunt, savage, ragged and reckless. Gold transformed Australia, with the population quadrupling to 1.7 million between 1851 and 1871. Agriculture flourished, with new mouths to feed and ex-miners seeking a future on the land. And gold helped democracy take root, as highlighted in our videos on the Eureka Uprising and Secret Ballot. The riches of the rush were reinvested in modernising cities and massive railway and irrigation projects to open new farmlands. Australians soon had the highest standard of living on Earth. Hargraves too got rich and refused to share his £10,000 reward. In 1890, a New South Wales Legislative Council inquiry found that Lister and the Toms were undoubtedly the first discoverers of payable gold in Australia. But Lister didn't get to enjoy his victory, having dropped dead on the day he was due to give evidence. The inquiry's report was quietly shelved, 
and everyone still talks about Hargraves as the gold guy. But who said history is fair?